we can open up the BVH tag PPG and begin to tag the file in much the same way we did Mulcor by starting with the COG. So we have the hips. And in actual fact, I'm probably going to have to just get rid of that one. The COG I'm actually going to set here. The spine root. And then the chest. And finally, for the pelvis, we'll pick this lower object here, which are actually the hips. As far as the thigh, pretty straightforward. We'll pick our thigh object. We get the left upper leg picked, the shin, and the IK of the foot. I'll select the clavicle. Now, we already have we have a, a retargeting node. The rig node, right shoulder, is already associated with the end effector left foot. Okay, well, that makes sense because if we look in the tag property page, we have our uh, right shoulder as the left foot. That's not going to work too much for us. So I'll pick the left foot separately. There we go. Again, just small little uh, errors in the BVH left to right mapping. So again, we'll go with the right clavicle. So again, it's nice that the tag property page sort of lets us know what's going on. So there we go, right shoulder to left shoulder, we'll pick the upper arm, the forearm. And as far as the wrist and hand goes, we're going to have to go with the forearm roll, and then the wrist would be, or the hand would be about this point here. So that takes care of the main part of our rig, and now for the extra parts, we'll jump in, tag the neck, the head, and now the foot roll elements. So we don't have to actually account for all of the elements, and I'll account for the tip of the toe. So we have the rig right toes end is associated with the IK anchor for the left upper arm. So again, let's see what's going on there. Again, the left upper arm seems to have used the right toes end. So I'll delete that. And for the left upper arm, we need to pick our element here. Okay. So that's looking okay. We'll pick the tip of the toes, the roll element, and we're going to have a bit of a conflict here with the heel as we already have, if we look at the object and I press enter, we already have the right foot picked. So for this one, if I actually pick the right heel, I'll get a, it'll actually work, and again it's picking the wrong object for the left uh, heel, so I'll delete the right shoulder and pick the left heel. Okay, I don't actually have a right toe in this case, so I'll just actually work from that. You can actually leave a couple of these elements blank if you have to. So at this point, I'm going to go in and save the tag property page for the tag template for my BVH file. So I'll save that, and we'll call this one BVH template. Once again, we build the glue for the file. And if I jump back into the Motion Capture to Rig property page now, we actually meet all the requirements for our mocap. So we've tagged the property page, or we've tagged the BVH file using the tag property page, and we've tagged the mocap or the mocore character, and now we're ready to transfer the mocap. So I'm done with the tag property page. If we actually just look at the mocap data for a moment, you can see it actually comes in as a BVH file and we have the same tag structure in the BVH file as we did on our Mulcor character. There's a couple of additional pieces because we actually have a mocap reference and then the actual mocap uh, tag file itself in the BVH custom property. So I'll jump back into my property panel. So I've specified my BVH file location, run limp. I've loaded or created the tag template for my BVH file and now it's time to apply the motion capture to the target model, the Malcor Advanced Rig. So I'll apply the animation, 
and let's see what we have. If I move into a shaded mode or into a textured mode, we get the file working pretty nicely for us. Let me just play back. We definitely get our character limping. I don't see any twisting on the character. The file actually looks pretty good. You can see that Mulcor is favoring the left thigh. All right, so that brings us to the end of the motion capture section in terms of tagging the mocap file. When we've actually finished applying the motion capture to the character, we can actually turn it into a motor file for easy load and transfer to other characters. If we needed to make any minor tweaks to the character, we could do so and actually animate it in the process. So if I actually just look at a couple of controls here, I may want to go and adjust the left toe in this case as it looks a little bit warped. So to do that, we can go and adjust the motor controls that we've set up. If I hit the adjust button, we bring up a property page that allows us to edit the various parts that we've worked with. So the main parts, the foot, wrist, uh, chest, head, and the left side of the foot and wrist are tabs unto themselves where we can do offsets uh, from the foot or from the chest. We can also clamp body parts to other parts. So again, we could clamp the arm to the leg if we wanted to. But I'm going to focus on offsetting some rotations in the left toe. So to go there, I'll just jump down into my rotations menu. And it would be the left ball, I believe. Uh, so if I look under the left ball or left toe, it'll be one of these two. We'll select the object. It looks like the left ball. I'll edit. And you'll notice we can actually just bring that whole ball right around and kind of line the foot up a little better. So when the character walks now, you can see that the character is really favoring that leg. And as we animate, we're going to need to continually key this value. So that's one of the nice things about being able to go in and work with the motion capture. We can just animate the offsets if there's any sort of problem. So I'll kind of just adjust a little bit here. We'll just bring that back around. So that looks pretty good. And I'll key the values in the offset. As we move through the file, we're likely going to keep having to fix. Again, this is part of part of dealing with motion capture. So we make our adjustments on the major keyframes. Find the strange areas that need fixing the most and adjust them. bringing that around. So again, if things start to look a bit funny, the character's leg is actually starting to twist a little bit. So again, we'll find an extreme angle right about here. And we'll try and bring that entire foot right around again and rotate it into the correct position. If we have a bit of a strange in-between, no problem. We'll just keep on moving through our timeline. Again, find a, another warped frame, wherever that may be. And fix. So mocap can be a bit time consuming, but again, in the end, being able to transfer motions very quickly between characters and edit them on the fly 
makes this tool highly, highly valuable without having to go out of the software package and do any kind of tweaks in a third-party software. All right, so we have our 60 frame animation here, and it looks like we've got that toe fixed. If I just check on the right foot, just see if there's any sort of weird anomalies going on. The foot kind of hits. Yeah, the left foot, or sorry, the right foot actually looks okay. I don't see too many problems with that. I might go in here and adjust one or two key poses. So if I close down this property panel and look, open up the uh, right ball control, I'll edit that. And maybe starting from frame one, I can lock in the keys that are already good. I can go right to the end frame, lock those keys down. And a lot of times I'll just kind of work and split the difference. So kind of set the keys on the first, the last, split the difference, and then work between those. And oftentimes you'll find you can set fewer keys this way. So that looks okay there. Just a very slight fix there. If I go back and split the difference between frame 15, so 15 looks okay on its own. And off frame 24, again, that looks okay as well. I think I'm being a little bit picky at this point. Okay. So the last part of this involves saving out the motion file. And so that'll be our next step. So we've got our finished mocap applied to the Mulcore character and some minor offsets in the feet to correct any strange, uh, strange positions or rotational values.